everyone my name is vishwadeep and i welcome you all on pw gatewala channel as you all aware that in previous few years computer science and related fields have given immense number of opportunities to the engineers and all other graduates so how this particular opportunity actually look very lucrative for those engineers who are not from computer science and that is exactly we are going to talk about in this specific session so if you are not from computer science and still you want to have a career through computer science then gate computer science is one of the best shot you can have if you are an engineer or let's say from any other domain and you want to have your career into the coding and computer science related fields then you try to prepare for gate computer science once you prepare for gate computer science and you go for mtech in top colleges like iis iits then definitely you will have a career in computer science which will give you of course a great kind of a work great number of opportunities and of course great packages you all our all you all are aware of course that after mtech if not i'll tell you after mtech the packages in computer science field are amazing maximum up to 2 cr of course in india let's say 60 70 lakhs outside india 2 cr plus and on an average almost 25 lakh per annum you can get so how exactly we can go over there and how exactly we can get it so you need to be aware of the computer science gate first and of course you need to prepare for it what is gate computer science and what are the courses involved how how is the weightage distributed among the courses and all of course i am going to talk about that too in this specific course so competitive exams if you are trying to attempt let's say gate computer science of course the competitive exams are having standard basic difference between the i mean difference from your semester exams and college exams college exams are qualification exams you write it and you qualify most of the students are qualifying the competitive exams are actually restricting exams those are restricting maximum number of students and just allowing only a few percentage of students who are really really extraordinary in terms of their knowledge and how you solve the questions through that particular knowledge gate examination if you talk about gate examination is having total 65 questions and total 100 marks so you will be having 30 questions of 11 mark each total 30 marks and you will be having 35 questions of 22 marks each 35 into 270 marks total 100 marks you will be having 65 questions among those 65 questions 10 questions will come from general aptitude quantitative aptitude verbal etc five questions one mark five questions two mark total 10 question 15 marks and 55 questions of 85 marks you will be having from your respective discipline if you are trying to or you know thinking to attempt the gate exam in computer science then computer science syllabus 55 questions 85 marks you will be having now there are three types of questions in gate examination one is mcq msq and nat mcq is multiple choice question for each question you will be having four options given among four only one option is correct you will have to tick mark that correct option to get the full mark if one mark question you will get one mark two mark question you will get two mark if you select the correct option if you are not attempting that question you will not get any marks zero but if you attempt a question mcq type and you are if you attempt a wrong statement or wrong option let's say option a was correct and you have corrected or if you have tick mark option b means if you have made it wrong then there will be a negative marking negative marking means you will not get any marks through this question and though whatever marks you have scored from other questions from there by 3 marks will be removed by 3 of what of that particular question which you made wrong if one mark question is there negative minus will be 1 by 3 if two mark question is there then 2 by 3 so if you have already let's say completed some number of questions and you got 50 marks but you made one mcq wrong which is of two marks then 50 minus 0.66 will be done from your overall score 
Now there will be three, two more type of questions. Two more type of questions are NAT type questions and MCQ, MSQ type question. NAT type those questions are there where no options are given. Numerical answer type is the full form. No option given. Question is there. Its answer is a number. You will have to fill your number. That answer is whatever. If you have correct answer, if you have given correct answer, you will get complete full marks. If you made it wrong or even you don't attempt, you will get zero. So no, no negative marking for NAT type questions. Then we have the most toughest type of questions MSQ where the probability of getting a correct answer is very, very low. And what is MSQ? Multiple select question. Multiple select questions will have four options given for each question. Among those four options, any one, any two, any three or maybe all four can be correct. So any more than one can be correct or in fact one option also can be correct. You will have to select all the correct options. If any two options are correct, you will have to correct or if you have you will have to tick mark both the options. If you are not correcting both the options or if you are you know selecting more than correct options if you are not selecting all the correct options or if you are selecting one wrong answer also a wrong one wrong option also you will get zero so that is why these type of questions are very very difficult that how many options are correct you don't know and what options are correct that is also you don't know that's why for these type of questions your conceptual clarity will be or should be top notch to solve these kind of questions here there is no any negative marking even if you attempt and you make wrong choices then answer you you will get zero if you don't attempt then too you will get zero then of course opportunity opportunities are amazing you write gate computer science you will be getting mtech admissions in india mtech admissions outside india mtech research admission in india phd direct phd option is also there yes in india not in only computer science but there are so many interdisciplinary branches where you can get admission through only gate computer science like mtech ai mtech cds you can have uh, other options are also available like cyber security computer technology and many other opportunities many quantum technology is there then there are some uh, colleges where in mtech electronics you can get admission through gate computer science many opportunities many many more so a lot of apart from that psus of course psus are only allowing those students who are having their btech in specific domain so if you are a computer science guy writing the gate exam computer science then only you can get selected in psus a few psus are allowing the people from it or electronics other than that psus are having very strict criteria but for other branches of students mtech is one of the best opportunities then let's talk about the of course money average salary as i already told you 12 lakh is something like average but if you see the top colleges that particular number goes to 25 to 30 lakhs approximately of course you will be having stipend if you go for mtech or mtech research or ms type of courses then you will be getting 12400 per month as a stipend and 28000 for phd if you go for direct phd also without doing mtech yes possible if you are an engineer four year degree course you have of course through gate examination you can directly go for phd that is called as direct phd next lot of research organizations are also like bark and csir which are giving you opportunity for the admissions in there like an employee over there to work in the research psus of course as i already told you a lot of psus are there but psus as i told are limiting lot of criterias btech branch then gate branch even if psus are conducting their own examination which is exactly related to computer science gate but still you will have such kind of restriction like you should have your btech in these specific branches only to have the admission in psus through gate computer science or related computer science related exam let's talk about eligibility eligibility upper limit is not there but if you are a ba b b tech student mem tech student or msc student ma ma ba mca you can write if you are in third year of any degree course, any degree course, whichever it is, if you are in third year or fourth year, 
or fifth year or passed out student from any degree course which is minimum three year course you can write gate examination but there is an mtech admission criteria you should minimum complete four year degree course then only you can get admission into mtech so if you are from bsc bcom or something you will have to complete two more years of your masters then only you can go for mtech gate examination you can attempt from third year onwards of your degree course if you are an engineer in any other branch like mechanical civil electrical and if you want to get attempt gate computer science it is one of the easiest branch to prepare for gate if you feel like sir we don't have much of the exposure till now for computer science we will struggle etc don't worry if you have good logical mind and if you are open to learn anything then computer science is the thing which you can learn easily on the go and gate computer science is having very very less syllabus as compared to all other branches of course ex except gate da gate da data science and artificial intelligence is having even more smaller syllabus but gate computer science as compared to civil engineering or electrical electronics mechanical chemical among all computer science syllabus is very very small okay now see objective questions etc how you will solve that those techniques and all you will learn definitely during your preparation now let's talk about the syllabus you have these are the courses the courses let's start from here data structure and programming nine percent weightage is there in the entire gate computer science then algorithm which is of course dependent on the data structure only then you have computer network the biggest course but a good weightage then you have general aptitude exactly 15 percent which is totally mathematics which of course you have learnt in your school time and problem solving only puzzles etc which you can easily you know adopt very easily engineering mathematics which you all know uh, this should be discrete mathematics so we have two types of mathematics both including approximately 13 marks weightage we have in computer science discrete math and engineering math engineering math anyway you are aware of just because you are an engineering student engineering math is there in your syllabus also operating system core computer science course helpful always then compiler design very small course dbms very practical course database management system theory of computation mathematics oriented course so you can easily understand it digital logic most of the electrical and electronics students are having this very small in terms of weightage and then we have coa computer organization architecture difficult people say that but it's okay if you are learning it definitely you will get the every concept of that I teach this particular course personally I know that it is difficult to initially understand it but once you go through the course and once you have one revision you will always be finding this particular course as your one of the favorite course. So this was all about if you want to prepare for computer science gate then how exactly you can prepare. Now one more thing which is not in this particular you know slide but i want to add if you let's say want to start gate computer science preparation one thing you should remember is what should be your sequence of the courses so sequence of courses i have you know divided into three levels for those people who are starting from scratch and they don't know at all anything about computer system so level one will have those courses which are easy and having no prerequisite at all first of all engineering math of course you can easily learn it then second c programming even if you are an engineering student of other branches you must have had a programming course in your first year for sure so c programming is one of the course then you should learn digital logic why just because it will be the basic for many other courses these three courses you should have in the level one then you have discrete math maybe a new for you guys just because you don't have discrete math of course we don't have discrete math in other branches of you know engineering but still mathematics oriented so you can easily understand and remember it a lot of portion of discrete math is you know uh, related to combinatorics and also p and c etc you will be having over here so these are the courses you should have in the level one and then general aptitude aptitude why just because 
this is another course which you can learn without any prerequisite needed but once you are done with these courses level one then you should go with the level two level two you will be having courses like data structure which is directly related to programming if you have done programming data structure you can now understand easily then you have coa computer organization architecture computer organization and architecture this particular course you should learn after digital logic so that some part of digital logic you will be utilizing over here as a base and then next you can go for a toc theory of computation once you learn theory of computation then you can go for next course compiler design immediately as compiler design has lot of elements in the course which are directly related to theory of computation then once you learn all these courses now you will be having complete base of your computer science cover next you will be going with the most important aspect which is like the toughest courses or few of the toughest courses operating system database management system and computer network these three courses you can learn at the end so that you will be having your courses covered and at the end once you will learn basic courses your practice of understanding learning and grasping power will build then at the end once you learn the topmost courses or the you know uh, the most detailed courses then you will be having a habit to sit longer and understand the concepts quickly one thing for sure you'll have to do after coa computer organization architecture only you learn the operating system that's how you do in preparation strategy etc we have shared a lot with you guys once you finish the course just solve the previous year questions of gate so that you will be having an idea on the batches of pw you'll be having daily practice problems a weekly test and many other aspects you'll be having so that you can continue your preparation and whatever problem you get those problems we can solve as mentor and faculty once again thank you so much for joining and you know listening this particular video if at all you have any problem query question or any kind of uh, you know uh, question later on left then please drop in the comment box so that we can answer through a new video or in the comment box so that you can have your career moving thanks again have a great day happy learning bye bye